G'day everybody and welcome to our weekly review show with Toby and Trent Edmonds. Uh, hope you all had a fantastic Anzac weekend. Um, listen, it, uh, the weekend wasn't as it has been the last few months, guys. It was, um, you know, you've been training multiple winners each week um, since well, since I've been here and this weekend was a little bit tougher. How, how are you feeling, Tobe? I'm okay. Like, um, we take the good with the bad. We had a great weekend the weekend before and most weekends we train and win and we actually didn't come out we didn't come away with a blank. We did did have one dip switch yesterday. So um sometimes you you know, your horse to get the the right runs, the bob of the heads and whatever and this week it was just unfortunate. Um a couple of those horses deserved to win. I will say I thought Ruka, you know, even though a, a long shot got down the outside and knocked him off, he had a little bit of a um held up for a little while on the straight and hadn't ran for a while, so he's a gross guy, he'll take good improvement out of that. But um, Usmanov was good again. Uh, Pepe Le Fou was great under a big weight. He's crept up. Obviously, that was a plate. And they carried 60 kilos in that race the other day. So, look, they all run good. I'm, you know, I'm sort of... Uh, that happens. Racing is what it is. And, and um, you have your good days with your bad. And unfortunately, we didn't have a bad day, but we just didn't have a brilliant day, you know? Yeah, 100%. No, I appreciate that. I think... Um... It's a great game, this, you know, it's, and, and I think that's why you meet so many great people along this, uh, in this sport, because the fact is, if you've got any ego, it gets ripped out. You can have five winners the week before, and the next week you can sort of, you know, you have just no luck and things don't go your way. So it's just a great game full of great people. And Trent, I'm sure, I'm sure you copped the, um, the losses pretty sweet, mate. You would have just been uh, like a water off a duck's back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, oh, look, loves, it's just, loves losing at Trent. Loves losing. No, well, they, they, yeah, no one, no one likes losing. But um, horses run good. Just uh, didn't get a result, unfortunately. I mean, I suppose we were sort of three heads or half heads or whatever away from a treble kind of thing. So yeah. still run well. Just uh, didn't get a result on Friday. Anyway, that happens, and we move on and have a crack this week. Uh, all good. It's certainly uh, frustrating at the time. And then um, we sort of can now look forward. Plenty of plenty of noms going out, I see, this morning for the weekend. So exciting times ahead. Plenty of nice chances on this coming up weekend. So looking forward to that. But let's run through them. We'll start with the winner, um, Bob Guff and friends. Big thank you to them um, on the straight on the back of Green Jacket. Uh, Tobe, you've got Just Jesse in the stable. And uh, she duly saluted on stable debut. Yeah, so... Um Drew beautifully to get a really good run. It was um, great for Bob Guth and, his, and, and the guys that actually stuck with him because I know he leased this horse out to quite a few of his friends and a few pulled out. So Bob now retains 70% of, of her and races her. Um, races her with a good, uh, a good mate who's Rupert Murdoch's right-hand man in the US. Um, got a lovely email from him yesterday afternoon thanking us. And, and uh, so that was good. And I thank them for their support. So look, Bob's been a, been a good good client for a number a couple of years now and he's um sent us up a couple of good horses but just jesse was good plenty to come for her she's not quite um tuned up either and she'll take good benefit out of yesterday just got the right run from the right barrier and ridden beautifully yeah she did she said it was right in there behind the pace and and had too much late so that was um, really impressive and i think i heard you guys saying in the aftermath that she's still cleaning up in her coat and things so you'd like to think there's a bit of natural improvement there really good yep. stuff all right, well done to the team there. We'll, we'll get straight into the Gold Coast, which was on Friday. Um, race one, Trent, we had Loving Miss. Now, she was going to start a hot price favourite, unfortunately had an incident in the gates and, and was scratched at the gates. Um, how is she, mate? Yeah, she was a little bit banged, banged and batted up um, after it. Uh, got her home, our vet stapled a section of her uh, cannon bone um, up going to be about a week to 10 days with those in and, and then um, she'll take them out so it could have been a lot worse um, majority superficial except for one sort of really deep cut so um, that sort of was the kickstart of our day really um, you know it started off ordinary like that but um, on the bright side is she's much much better sort of a couple of days after uh, she was fairly lame after it happened uh, it's come through it okay. Just going to take a little bit of cleaning up over the next couple of days. Yeah, perfect. All right. So Stuart's made the right call to, to scratch her. And um, thankfully, just looks all superficial and she'll be back soon for the Archer Park team. So that's a real positive. 
Um, we'd rated to wait race five then. Toby and Casarina Starr um, went around over 1,800 metres after her really impressive win last uh, time. Maddie G- McGillaray, uh, she sort of got back and it was seemed hard to make up ground there, even though it was over 1,800 metres. Yes, um, I think the tempo was really too slow for her. Needed a, needed a bit, bit of speed on. She gets back and runs on okay. Um, bit disappointing though, I will say that. Like I thought she'd run, run a lot better and finish a lot closer. Uh, maybe we backed her up a little bit quick. She might be a filly that might, or a man now that might need just to race his space a little bit. A um, little bit difficult the way the programming is. You know, when these races bob up, sometimes you've got to run in them even though your horse is not quite, quite, um, uh, well, that's not their, quite their racing pattern or the way they race best or when they're, when they're actually at their best. So I think we learnt, learnt something yesterday on Saturday. Maybe we just um, give her a little, little bit of time between runs. She's got, she comes in on fresher legs and she... Um, and she will run a lot better next time with good tempo in, in the race. Uh, disappointing, though, for mine. Okay, understood. Race six, uh, the Class 6 played over 1,400 metres. Uh, Toby touched on it earlier there. Trent Pepe the few. Uh, he ran second. He drew 10, Maddie McGillivray. Um, annoyed up front, mate. Annoyed up front. And then, um, and then had to sort of fight off challenges and just got nosed out late. To be fair, it looked like... Um, the winner was going to go straight past him, but he kept on rallying back, and I thought he was enormous in fairness under the big weight. Yeah, he was huge with 60 kilos. Um, not a great deal more to add on to that. Uh, Matt done the right thing because that horse outside is an absolute pest, Parco. Uh, it only knows one way, uh, and it, it was sort of they were going along at a fairly genuine tempo. It was ripping and tearing outside. So rather than keep pressing, because I'm sure that Alan Chow on the horse that uh, ended up leading, would have kept going as well. He elected to take a seat, got outside him and um, done the right thing in uh, getting outside him and then just putting it to him for rock hard fit. Horse that won, too good, had three kilos less, went around the middle of the track and won again. So, um, you know, our, our guy was really game in defeat with the 60, but uh, just found one better on the day. So he might go for a break now and uh, we freshen up and then sort of go... Um, summer series and then magic millions hopefully so like that's eight months away but we're planning right ahead of now nice yeah good he's had a great prep anyway peppy for the archer park team so have a good break and and the same race on resumption was uh, ocean addict toby she's a staying mare resuming um and uh you give a pass mark for for saturday uh, friday's effort yeah she ran okay blew all, all the chance of running a place when she won the start come out uh, come out you know three or four links behind them and then you know once you once you do that you're you're on the back foot the whole way so look um she yeah, pass mark for her and she'll be better once we push her out in, in distance as we thought i just thought fresh up for an hunt she may have been able to run in, run into a hole um i think she probably would have if she got away but just didn't didn't begin at all I forget she um I forget she went around use that as fitness and drive on yeah okay beautiful I'll bring her on a little bit, no doubt as well. All right, race eight was the open handicap over 900 metres for the for the speed machines. Um, Trent, we had Uzmanov um, run there again. Um, he was there on the pace with with Boom Chicka Boom, and and he, and he ran his skin out, but uh, just wasn't so uh, quite good enough on the day. Yeah, just got out punched. Boom Chicka Boom was coming back three weeks off off a 1200 metre run back to 900. Uh, obviously freshened up well. With our guy, we um, Spacey's runs pretty well, sort of four, six, four, five, six weeks, whatever. Um, whether or not, and I know it sounds silly because we kept him at 900, whether or not he was just that little bit soft, uh, he's a very hard puller at home on the track, so we tend to not over gallop him and overdo him, uh, just purely for the fact that he gallops hard every time he goes out there to, to work, so. Um, he doesn't ever do a great deal when we do do much work with him. So maybe that six weeks between runs this time, he just was a little bit maybe too fresh. And um, the other horse coming back from 1,200 and freshening up again, just got him on fitness late. He was obviously there to win, but he charged through, charged through the bridle, showed really good speed, um, got rolled, unfortunately. Um, look, these horses, they sort of take turns in winning. And this guy... At this type of journey, if he gets things to suit, he'll win more than he loses. Um, I'm still keen to probably see him ridden a little bit quieter as well, rather than sort of leading outside a horse and making all the running. If he's able to 
just be ridden a tiny bit off them and a little bit steady over the short course. I think you'll see him really explode and um, hopefully we can just continue mm. to try to get him to settle. I think we've done that nearly in track work. We just want to see it on race day. Yeah, he's just so electric out the gate, so isn't he? Just yeah. pings the lids and it's very hard to ride him right on cold from there because he's just he's just in the race from the start, isn't he? He, he has the last two or three. He's, he's well, particularly the last two 900 metre starts at the Gold Coast. He's really jumped and run and got up and got going. Um, previous to that, the reason he'd get up and over racing, he was sort of a half a step slow at times, and then he'd want to get on with it. So last two starts have been a little bit different in that regard. Um, and as I said, I, I'd like to see him just ridden a little bit steady, come out a little bit negative on him maybe, and then let him attack the line. And he's only got, well, he gets, he's got a really sharp sprint. It's not for very long. So um, if we see him at his best, he can continue to win races like that for sure. Yeah, super run, Usmanov. I'm looking forward he has to drawn poorly the last, uh, He has drawn poorly the last few times, though. That's why he's actually began and sat outside there. I think if he draws softly, he will end up with a good run. You don't have to come at him so hot, you know. He, he, he could still begin and the speed could go around him and he gets a lovely run. So barriers are important in that regard, too, for that type of horse to be able to relax and finish off. Um, Royal Witness. Royal Witness is in the same race. Tobe, first start for the stable. Um, he, he was... Um, he, listen, he travelled really well. He drew wide as well, but sort of travelled very well in running and uh, looked like he was going to let down, but when those two just sprinted, sprinted off, he just couldn't quite go with them and he stuck on very well for fourth. He ran well. You know, um, they, they've run home in 32-something or, or, and uh, th- those, those front runs, so it's quite difficult for him to let down. I, I'd suggest he'd, he'd run as good as he could at that distance. I think, I think you find that the 11 or 1,200-metre tempo would be better for him. Um, especially if we can find 1100 for him would be ideal I think he can roll up on the speed and control um, maybe the 900 is just that little tad sharp for him but um, you know we learned a bit about him the other day so that, that's good and um, get a bit of a blow after as well after a really solid gallop so he'll improve off that and we'll find the right race for him and he'll be winning shortly yeah absolutely well, also helps with the zones up helps with the zones open up a bit now too so we can you know we can plan to, to go to Brisbane or the sunny coast or wherever we need to go we're not just not just have to be here. Have a few more options. Yeah, nice. No, good stuff. I thought it was a nice. Um, thought it was a good first start for the stable, and um, he will uh, be winning soon. Touch wood for the Tricolors team. Race nine was the cutest three-year-old over eleven hundred meters. Um, lovely little race. It's full of quality. And um, Trent Ruka, he'd drawn the absolute outside of the field. Um, Michael Carhill um, got him in a good position, I thought. Lovely cover, and um, probably just didn't get out um, when he needed to. But uh, at the end of the day, the horse came over the top and, and rolled them all. Yeah, he was he was pretty good in defeat, as Dad mentioned just before. Uh, hadn't had a start for a fair while. Um, got cover, but he wanted to get trucking a little bit back in behind them. And I think it's pretty evident to see with any. Sort of even lucky, he should have won. Um, yeah, the horse came out, came from behind him in the run, but it had an unimpeded run down the middle. And, um, you know, our guy was sort of stuck trying to get a run halfway up the straight and poked through, but the momentum got him that wide. So, one to follow next start. Okay, very good. Um, Ruka, one to follow next start. Zach Attack, I thought, performed very well, well carrying, carrying. Um, I think, 58 kilos for a filly. Um, and a half, yeah. The eight and a half there, and um, you know, she I thought she ran super, Toby. Yeah, she ran great. Um, unusual for a three hour filly to carry that weight against the against against Colts so, or, or Geldings and, and the same age. I, I suggest um, she comes back to that filly's and mare's grade. Um, she'd be better weighted and better placed. She'd probably look at sending her to, to that scone meeting for the Denise's Joy. I think it is a three year old filly's 1100 at Rose yeah. Hill this year. Which is in a, in a few weeks' time, so um, we look at sending her there. She she pulled up quite good actually, and um, had a good gallop with a big weight. Did well. Blanket finish too. There wasn't much between the first five, so it was it was a good race. Yeah, and some quality performers, right? It's proper proper. It was sort of a real three year old lead up to black type races type race, and there'll be plenty of black type performances yep. come out of there. So I think okay, if we get a soft track, Brucey going to Sydney, um, that'll suit her too. If if hopefully yep. a tiny bit of rain yep. down there. She's much better when she can get a toe into the ground. So back yeah. to Philly's grade should be good. Yeah, beautiful. All right, very well-bred Philly there, uh, heading towards some black-type targets. So keep an eye on her, everyone. Um, just touching on the 2K Thoroughbreds team, uh, Trent, that they had a couple of runners in that same race. 
Um, yep. But Tamer, who um, who was ridden quite her previous start and was, did so again there on Friday, and Champagne Jet, who was coming off um, a bit of a layoff. Yeah, but Tamer, she was okay. Look, back to grade, both of these fillies, um, they had a had a really sort of arduous Magic Millions preparation as babies. Um, and we push, push, push to try and get them there and probably debatable as to whether they've trained right on or the others have caught up. Uh, could be sort of six or one half dozen, the other type of thing. Um but Tamer, I think, I think well, both of them have just got to come back and grade a little bit and be placed a little bit carefully. They've both uh, won some good prize money, but um, they've basically been racing since October of their two-year-old year. So they've both had some pretty hard racing and, and a fair amount of it too. Um, as I mentioned, just probably need to come back a rung and place them a little bit more effectively. Uh, and that'll see them return to better form. Yeah, they sure both needed both. to run the other day. They both needed to run the other day anyway, so it was no stress running them. It was more about getting some fitness and getting a look at where they fit into. So we can we sort of knew in the back in the back of our mind that they need to come back in grade. So we can do that pretty quickly, and um, and they should get to their mark. You know, they should get yeah. back to winning, winning. I'd imagine shortly. Yeah, it's another one of these tricky ones with these. You know, the programming the way it is. You know, you sometimes you have to yep. run against each other, and it's not ideal. But they're obviously both working well and both look very well. So I drop back in grade, and we'll see them. Hopefully bounce back to form very soon. Uh, at the Sunshine Coast on Saturday, we end up having the one runner, Toby. He was your uh, best bet of the weekend with the Sports Bet Charity Challenge. And, you know, he's coming off a, a bit of a disaster first up. And to be fair, I thought he ran enormous. Um, you were right on the money there. Um, he was still very new. He sort of got to the front and didn't know quite what he was doing. And, and it ended up being a three-way go for the win there. And he, and he just got nutted out and ran third. But he was terrific. You know, I was really happy he ran so well. Shame he got beat, but um, that is what it is. But he'll he'll take uh, another young horse that's only had two starts. He had a couple of trials, and and but as it didn't quite work out for us from the outside barrier or from a wide barrier where he out, got outside horses and ran away from them. And and to be truthful, I think it was a bit of a disinterested ride as well out there. It didn't give us much much guide on where where we were going with him, and it looked horrible. You know, horse get beat that far at Bow Desert, you think well. Is no good, you know, but we knew we knew he had good ability and, and you know, everything we've done with him has been positive and it was good to take him to a good track um, like the Sunny Coast. Nice big track for him and to get Brad Stewart on him who gets seems to get a, uh, the best out of most horses he rides when, when, they, when they're good enough, that is. And, um, you know, to run third. So unfortunately, he got beat, but, you know, I was, I was quite happy with the way he went. You know, he's a chance of going for a break now. I'm going to look at him for the next few days and decide whether we geld or, or, or what we actually do. I, you know, the carnival is upon us. I think he's a three-year-old. He's got a three-year-old written all over him by the look to me. Probably if we geld him, I think it might make, make, make a horse of him. Similar similar type horse to Maslow. You know, he, he may, I think you'll see him furnished and everything now. And um, when he's three, you'll see the best of him. Yeah, right. Nice. Very good. And that was a nice... Um, certainly, I'm sure the confidence builder for the horse too after a really yeah. good um, experience out there at the sunny coast. Okay, Ipswich Sunday, we had another uh, two-year-old go round, Trent, um, in the two-year-old race there, comfortably numb. He was a horse that you had uh, mentioned, forget his first run, a bit like Wavemaker, feed his first run after he got crunched early and um, and just had never had a shot from there. And he, I thought he uh, raced a lot better, jumped very well, put himself in a good position and uh, and was solid to the line, uh, you know. Behind a, obviously a winner that was just was just uh, way too good for everyone on the day, and must have won by four or five. Yeah, he was good. Um, much improved. He goes for a break now, and um, make a nice three year old. He's still got to mature a fair bit, so should do that with a bit of with a spell, and then um, he win a maiden pretty quickly next prep. Okay, very good. And the three year old race over a mile. Uh, we had group think go around Toby, Andrew Mallion aboard, um, got a terrible barrier, was drawn wide here, and uh, unfortunately in, in the run just got uh, stuck wide for the entire, but he still hit the line well to run third, which was a really creditable performance. Yeah, he ran well. So it's a, the, the jockey first thing he came back and asked me, do you think I should have went up and sat, sat outside lead? And I, I sort of said to him, well, no, I think you'd probably... Should have sat three wide pulling. What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> was the was the sarcasm <laughs> was the sarcasm involved? But um, anyway, it was a bit of a 
a bit of a numb nuts ride to be truthful and uh, he admitted that and um, it is what it is. He ran well, but just, uh, you know, one, one that probably got away. I think, uh, I think if he strolls up outside, lead, he controls and probably wins, wins quite clearly. And, and um, he's a horse we're hoping to get out to 2000 in his next run. So um, would have been good to bowl that over and, and win, but um, we're going, going into that race sort of um, hoping he's done enough at the mile now to push him out to 2000 fitness wise, I suppose, but ran well. You ran two thousand meters on on Sunday there. But they, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, yep. nice nice performance there by the so you think three year old. So uh, looks like yep. he's. I mean, like you said he would improve as he got over in distance, and he really really um, showed another level there on Sunday. So that was good, and it's very hard to make up ground at Ipswich, wasn't it? I mean, all day mm. there was very difficult. So it's a bit on pace, um, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, sitting deep and sitting backwards was not the place to be. Um, in uh, Just Jesse's race, Trent, we also had Cuban Mint, who was having her first um, start for the stable. And um, Michael Carhill was aboard, and, and he sort of just mentioned afterwards that she got absolutely cleaned up at the start and was all over from there. As I mentioned, it was switched very, very uh, sort of on pace there on Sunday. And she got caned and was last throughout until the turn. And I thought she made up really good ground in the straight. Yeah, she was, she was good. I'd probably forget it, um, to be fair sort of uncompetitive spot after getting a wallop out of the barriers. Um, Michael sort of cut the corner. She got clear late and made up nice ground. So one to watch probably next start over a little bit further, maybe ridden in a fairly similar manner and she should be winning pretty quickly, you'd have to think. Um, she's going she's going well enough. So placing a similar grade, she should be pretty competitive. And Philly, who won, was... Um, was super. She's got a fair bit to go as well. She sort of doesn't look the best yet. It's coming. Um, I was just worried about that inside barrier that uh, she missed the kick in the trial. Uh, and I thought, well, if she misses the kick today here at Ipswich, then she's going to be in a bit of strife. But Scott was good, you know, put her up on speed. Um, she was travelling a long way out like she was going to win, to be fair. So I think there's a little bit more left in the tank there once she starts to look a bit better get a little bit fitter, um, you see the best of her. So that was great to have a first start for us, for, for Bob and the team. Obviously great supporters and got the cash and, you know, she can go on. Yeah, no, super. Excellent. All right, our last run for the weekend was unconditional in the uh, Colts and Geldings benchmark 68 uh, for the 2K Thoroughbreds team. Toby, he was coming off a long layoff and they absolutely flew in that race. It was a high pressure race and, and um, he did. He probably did okay, given his long layoff to hold on for six. What do you think? I thought so. I thought he ran pretty good. Um, subsequent to that run, or to to his, when I went down to the types after the race, and I'll jump to that before touching on him. He, uh, the jockey, um, Jag, said that he was getting pressure from the outside of him throughout the run, and must have got him off balance because he's he's really bashed the bowl of his heel and um, cut it about quite severely. Um, it's, it's it's not life threatening or anything like that, or or going to finish his preparation. It's just it's just going to be something that's going to take a um, a week or so to heal. Uh, so in the background, that's that's there as well. So after seeing that, I thought he ran super. To be truthful, you know, one of those sort of knocks that might have just you know stopped him from from really striding out the last bit. Right? Yeah, just got him, got him off balance, and he's put a bad stride in and, and banged his heel. So um, for him to keep going and 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 to hold on and run six of good effort. So uh, he'll be improved sharply by the run. I thought, I thought in the yard prior to, he looked a little new as well. Like you can always tell it's easy, easy at home. They're, they're doing, doing all the work and you're sort of getting them ready and you, and they've had X amount of gallops and a trial and the rest of it. But uh, when they get to the races and you actually get to look them in, look at them in the yard, uh, you sort of get a feel saying, oh, he looks a bit soft, you know, and, and, you know, it's like any, any athlete first up after a, after a while, you know, they, they do take a run or two to, to come to hand. So I'd, I'd imagine that's him as well. Right. And so, so we'll see him out again in sort of three or four weeks' time after that, that, that sort of yep. race. Yep, for sure. Very good. All right, I wanted to follow out of there for the 2K team for sure. All right, team, we'll go to uh, um, horse to follow from the beaten runners, please. One we should keep an eye on going forward, please. Trent. Um, I'm going to go with... Group think I, I reckon, um, yeah. Plain as day to see, ran super, got a crap ride. So, one to follow once he gets out over further. All right, group think for Trent, and what about yourself, Tobe? 
Yeah, I've got a couple. I'd, I'd, I'd stick with Ruka, give him another chance. And also Ocean Addict, um, as she gets out in distance and um, whether she's a tad slow away in, the, in those races where she is out to 1,800, maybe even next start and on to 2,000, doesn't really matter that much. She's a back marker anyway. And um, she's in really, really good order and, and um, she'll be winning at a second or third run in. Beautiful. All right, guys, thanks so much for your time. It's never easy after uh, that sort of weekend, but thank you for that. And uh, very much looking forward to our plenty of uh, runners coming in the coming weekend. See you on Thursday. Thanks very much. See you guys.